Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Um, welcome one, once again to the Shabbat that we're having. And it's a beautiful day outside today. It's in the Shabbat. It's a blessed day. And uh, we're, almost end, we're almost at the end of the uh, Feast of the Le Unleavened Bread. And, and now we're counting the Omer, which is, means that uh, now we're headed for the Pentecost, which is uh, it's the Feast of Shabbat. Okay? Um, for all you out there, uh, and, and the ones that are here too. <laughs> um, the message today um, is titled The Knowledge of a Balance. Okay? Even though on Shabbat we don't do this. We don't we don't do this on Shabbat. We don't we don't we do teach but basically we don't preach. Really on Shabbat what you do we get together, we eat and and there's a reading that we do from the Old Testament that uh, the prophets and the New Testament, and, and it has to coincide, okay? And we are all over, all that, all the kehilas and and all the sort of the, the synagogues uh, that are do they believe in Yeshua? Uh, we have to be in the same page, okay? This is what it means to to be in one accord, in one spirit, okay? Um, so when I bring these teachings, it's really, uh, and I said this before. It's really um, to, we need to catch up because a lot of information we have been denied. And what's happening is in the book of Daniel, uh, the angel was uh, told Daniel that in the last days, um, knowledge was going to increase. See, anything we want to know today, uh, we can find, we can Google it and we can find whatever we want, whatever. But the knowledge that he was talking about it was talking about not his knowledge that has been for so long has been hidden. And the one that was going to reveal it was his spirit, his Ruha, his, his Holy Spirit. And those that are obedient, those that are uh, that are walking with him, those that really are are really reality is those that are that are hungry, that are thirsty, that are desperate for him, he is going to reveal himself. Okay? in this last days. So, um, with further ado, uh, let me just explain a little bit something about what I am going to teach you today. Everything that Elohim, for you that you don't know, God, everything that Elohim has created and made, everything has laws. Um, Natural laws, uh, laws of gravity, um, uh, heavenly laws, earthly laws, uh, everything he has, he has made with laws, full laws, and so on and so on. Now, a law, literally what it is, is an order. Okay, it's an order. The things are in order, and this is the way it happens, and, and it will uh, evolve, it will grow, okay? Um, before I continue, uh, let me ask you one question, okay? L let me ask you one question. What are you expecting out of this teaching today? What is it that you're expecting from this teaching? Are you just here because you're curious? Are you here because you're, you're hungry? I mean, really, what is it that you're expecting from this teaching today? And even though I cannot hear you, okay, um, whatever it is that you're thinking, you know, apparently it is. So with that too, um, let me explain a little bit also about, also um, about that we human beings, we need uh, six needs. We need six needs in our lives. And today I'm going to speak of one of those needs, which is really is called balance. Okay? Now, what are these needs? Okay? Please follow me to the chart. Okay. As you can see here, okay? As you can see here, this is you. Okay? There are six basic needs that we need to, to live and to live. 
And let me go very briefly, one at a time. Now, number one, we need certainty. We need certainty because this is the need for safety, comfort, order, consistency, and control. In other words, this certainty is like to be stable. Number two, we need significant significance. This is uh, we need uh, for many. Uh, in other words, this is the significance uh, needed that we are wanted, that we're special. Uh, this is validation. This is to give you honor. Uh, in other words, when we find significance in our lives, okay, within inside of us, we don't need approval from anybody else. Okay, that's that's number two. Number three, we also we need what is called love and connection. Okay, this is the need for uh, many. Um, Many needs like uh, we need to connect, we need to communicate, we need intimacy. And, and really shape ourselves and shape others. This is here, right here. Now, the other thing that we need is called uncertainty. Uncertainty, it, what it means is variety. Okay? This is the need for, uh, for diversity and challenges and change and surprise and adventure. Right here. Okay? Now, I'm not going to tell you about this one, but I am going to tell you about contribution. And also, we need number, number it reaches six, because we're going to talk about this one today. We need contribution. Contribution is the need to give to others. It's to care, is to protect beyond ourselves, helping others, sharing, and bring values to others. Okay? Now, we need all these, but I'm not going to talk about all these. I am going to talk today about what is called growth. We need, gr we need to grow in our lives. This is number five. Five being grace. Okay? Five also being the first five books of the Torah. Okay? The need to grow. We need to grow. We need, we need this for emotion. We need to grow in our emotions. We need to grow in our intellectual, we need to grow spiritually, and we need to grow to develop. Okay. In this area, this, now remember, here, right here, okay? This is you. And when I mean you, I mean you and I. This is, this is us, this is you, okay? Now, this can go very deep, but today I'm going to talk about this. Why is that? Because if you don't have all of these in your life, what happens, you are unbalanced. For example, maybe, uh, maybe uh, you're married or, or you're in a relationship. And maybe uh, you are, uh, you have a, you, you have love, you connect, you, 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 in other words, you have a feeling, you want an honor, okay? But maybe your partner or your husband, okay, or wife, maybe they're not here, maybe they're just uh, significance. This is the problem in, in a relationship. Sometimes, and it doesn't mean that one is right and one is wrong, no, 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 it's just that we have to, we have to understand this, Okay? But today I'm going to speak to you about growth. I'm going to speak to you about balance. This is very important. Okay? There is a universal law called balance that affects all of us. I am sure you realize that without balance, no one would survive this world. Do you believe this? This is why when our bodies are out of balance, we begin to get a cold or a headache or, or uh, a back pain, okay? Because something is wrong in our body, so we are out of balance. This is why we need to take care of ourselves, okay? We attempt in the past to try to change this universal law, in other words, of balance, to adapt to our ways of living and have some drastic results happen as a result. The more you take, the more it will be taken from you. And the more you give, the more it will be given unto you. 
I prefer to be one of the givers. I don't know about you, but I prefer to be a giver. Right now, I am giving you. I am giving you. Okay? I prefer to be one of the givers. I prefer to give more to people with love, knowledge, experience, motivation, inspiration, and service through the value of quality to make their lives better. I am bringing this to you today to bring your life so you can better your life. Because I live this, I, I study this for my life. So if it makes me feel good, I know that it's going to make you feel better. Now, I realize that by not accepting anything in return, that Yahweh's universal law of balance will later determine my future rewards of life. Okay? In other words, I don't do this to get a cookie or, a, or, or maybe a trophy. or. But you know what? What you give, you will receive. And if he, and if he tells you to do something or to give... Let's suppose to this ministry in some way. And you don't do it, you, you really, you really uh, don't understand the meaning of giving. Giving is love. Giving is service. Love and service and giving is the same thing. And the more you love, the more you give and the more you serve. This is why a lot of people don't understand what it is. See, Love is a, is a law. Love is a law. And love, what it is, is to give, is to serve. And a lot of people cannot love because they don't know how to serve. They don't know how to give. And you cannot give what you don't have. So see, today I'm here to give you the teaching to teach you about the laws of balance. Okay? Now, what am I talking about? What, what am I talking about when I say the knowledge of balance? See, <laughs> to understand anything, growth, love, a relationship, your children, uh, there's got to be, you must learn how to operate. Without learning, you cannot grow. This is why maybe some of you, ¿Cómo está, señora? <laughs> some of you, maybe they're asking him to give you wisdom. Are you asking him yes. to give you wisdom? Yes. Well, he's giving it to you right here, right now. Amen. I don't know what else, who else you hear, but he's giving it to you right now. Amen. Now, what I'm about to teach you is very profound. Okay? So see, without learning, you cannot excel. You cannot grow. And the reason most people don't want to learn is because when you learn, you need to put your mind to work. And most don't want to work because working, they're lazy. They want other people to do it for them. For example, if you want to lose weight, I cannot lose weight for you. And the reason a lot of people, really, they start a diet and they lose weight, but they go back and they gain all that weight. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. There's many ways of losing weight. Many ways. But if you don't have the knowledge of the why, if you don't understand how important vegetables and all this does to certain parts of your body, and what does... Uh, um, junk food does to your body and you don't do your research and you don't do you don't learn you know what happens because you're doing things fast so it's by not learning you're not going to get the strength to really do what you need to do so you can lose weight does that make sense yes okay <clears throat> now see the most high created everything in pairs Everything in Paris. Yeah. Everything. Amen. He told Noah, take two animals of every kind, female, male, um, um, clean and unclean, and take it to the ark. Remember? Yes. Okay? 
Yeshua sent his disciples by two. Okay? There will be two witnesses in the time of tribulations. In the Garden of Eden, there were two trees. The tree of knowledge and good and evil and the tree of life. So what's the reason for that? Why always two? Okay? What is the reason for the two? Father and Son. The reason for the two is the opposite attracts. Mm -hmm. For example, there's a car. You have a battery. The battery has a positive and a negative. You cannot have two positive or two negatives. You need a positive and a negative. So two, what happens is it's, 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 it, it attracts you. It's an, energy. It, it's an energy that attracts you. Okay? Because he made everything perfect. So, including our body. He created our body, a right side and a left side. True. If our body, which means two opposite of each other, two eyes, two, two holes, two hands, two feet, okay? Two ovaries, two testicles, two chests, okay? Two eyes, okay? Why is that? Because if you... In the heart, there's two sides of the heart. There's two sides of the brain. Two kidneys. Two kidneys. Okay? Yeah. Two sides of your lungs. Why is that? Because opposite attract. Wow. Just like a battery in a car. Are you with me? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yahweh even gave us two things. He gave us, and look at this, I'm sorry. He gave us a choice to choose between blessings and cursing because they're both opposite. <laughs> yeah, true. Mm. True. Okay? Yeah. You choose today what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And stop blaming the devil because you know what? You live the way you live because you chose that. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Yeah. You chose, let me tell you, you went inside where you're at right now and you can come out. Amen. Okay? Because he gives us a will. Okay? Now, mm. go with me mm. to book to uh, uh, John, uh, 3 John, the, uh, John 3, or thir the 3rd of John, not John. In other words, uh, uh, 30 John, chapter 1, verse number 2. Now, if our bodies... Or our body is not in balance, it's not going to be healthy. Wow. If our minds are not in balance, it's not going to be healthy. Yeah. If our spirit is not in balance, it will not be healthy. Wow. If our soul is not in balance, it will not be healthy. 3 John, 3 John, chapter 1, verse 2 and 4. And I want all of you to go there because we need to understand what this balance is. Okay? Now, 3 John, chapter number 1, verse number 2 and 4. Are you all there? Look at what it says. And please, I am... 3 John chapter 1, one uh, verse 2 and 4. Beloved. Now, this John is the brother of Yeshua. Amen. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. Even as you walk in the truth. Now, I am going to ask you a question. How much do you love yourself right now? On a scale from 1 to 10, how much do you love yourself now? The way you're living, what you're doing with yourself, the things that you're hearing, how balanced are you? How much are you? How much do you love yourself? 
And I want you to write it down on a scale from, from, from 1 to 10, how much do you love yourself right now? How you're living? Are you balanced? Okay? Now, in other words, before you answer that question, what are you feeding your spirit? What are you feeding your soul and what is your what are you feeding your body? Now remember, I'm going to take you deep into this, okay? Body, spirit, and soul. Yes. So what's the difference between spirit and soul? Oh, I'm, I, she's asking me what's the difference between a spirit and a soul. I'm going to tell you that in a minute. Okay. You are not what you see. Mm -hmm. See, we're, we're so concerned about our bodies, and you have to be, okay? But we're concerned, most people are more concerned about their body than their spirit or their soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the dilemma that we have today, right now, amongst believers. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, now look at this. What are you feeding? Your spirit, your soul, and your body. Now, The elements or things that you eat to be to have a healthy body, okay, which is the food or, or what you're feeding. The food that you're feeding, your, 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 your flesh, your spirit, and your soul. Okay? Go with me for 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Go, go with me there, please. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Now, this is Paul speaking. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, chapter five, verse twenty-three. Now look at look at look at what Paul is saying here. And the very okay, and the very Elohim of peace sanctify you wholly, and pray Elohim your whole spirit, soul, and your body be pres preserved blameless unto the coming of our Master Yeshua Hamashiach. There's three, there's three things that we, that we have in our bodies. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a, 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 a body. Okay? Now, <laughs> where I'm going to teach you today on this balance is the mysterious side. It's the mysterious side of your, of your soul and your spirit. Romans chapter uh, 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Now, one of the places the enemy attacks and is really the battlefield, which most of you know, is the mind. Because the mind is the one that you receive knowledge. The mind is the one that you receive wisdom. And what is really what is what is really affecting people today is by drugs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. dementia, mm -hmm. not only in the elderly, sometimes even in young people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does drug affect you? Your mind. What does what does alcohol, an alcoholic, what does affect you? Your mind. Your mind. Okay. What is really uh, um, foods that are not good for you? What does it affect you? Of course, it affects your mind, but it affects everything. Okay. Yeah. So this is the area I want, I, I want to talk when, it, when it's talking about balance. Okay? Now, look at what it says here on Romans chapter 12, uh, 12 1, 1 and 2. I beseech you there, brethren, by the mercies of Elohim, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Elohim, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that is good, acceptable, and perfect will of Yahweh. Okay? Now, okay, I got this. Let me take this out of the way. I finished with that well, one. How do you renew your mind? Uh, renew how do you renew the mind? Yeah, because my brother just called me and told me that he's doing yoga. He's renewing his mind with yoga and his wife. How do you I'm renew your mind? He's asking me because uh, he says that his brother called uh, that his uh, the him and his bro and the wife, his brother and his wife are doing yoga. And how do you remove? How renew. do you renew the mind? Okay. 
The word re, okay, it means that you have to be reestablished, redevelop. Renewing the mind mm -hmm. is really putting new information. You got to take the hard drive that you have from, from, from bad habits and take it away like a hard drive and put a new, a new hard drive. Okay? And renewing the mind with who? With the mind of who? Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay. Do you come in agreement with me that today there's, there's really not a, a lot of uh, physical connection, so to speak, and the most connection is done through the internet and through, and through texting? What connection is that? People are losing really physical connection, like talking to a human being. Shaking the hand of a human being. Mm -hmm. Seeing a smile on a child. And everything today is being connected to what? Through a false connection, which is what? Electronics. Mm -hmm. And guess where all this is going? In our minds. Mm -hmm. This is very powerful. Now, 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 now let's, let's look at this. The soul and the spirit are mysterious tied, okay, mm -hmm. together to make what the scriptures call the heart. I have a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Now, please pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. And I know you are, but pay more attention. Forget about everything that's happened. Just pay attention because this is going to help you. Mm -hmm. Man was made physical. Or was he? Man was made physical. Or was he? No, he was not. <gasps> How can I say this? Because for Adam and Eve to be physical, Adam and Eve had to come from a physical mother and a physical father, and they did not. Are you with me? So Adam and Eve were not physical. Adam and Eve had different, had different kind of bodies. What was his mom? What was Adam and Eve's mother and father? Because Adam and Eve really, two things happened to Adam and Eve. They were created and they were made. And then he put flesh upon them. So they didn't look like you and I. Adam and Eve sinned. When they sinned, the glory, the beauty, the eternal body that they have actually fell from grace and they went into darkness. And Yahweh had to put flesh upon them. And I'll show you. I will show you. So really, what was Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve were two beings. They were humans, but not like you and I. That happened afterwards. Because we are human because we come from a father and a mother. Fleshly mother and father. They didn't. Think about it. There was some form of angelic, but I don't know what kind. But let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. Now. Man is made up of physical material, which is called a body, that can be seen and touched. We can see it and we can touch it, correct? Yes. You don't see your spirit and you don't see your spirit or your soul and you cannot, you cannot see it or touch it. What does your spirit or soul look like? Don't know. Okay? But he also made us, look at this, he also has made us in the immaterial. In other words, the spirit and the soul doesn't have material, which is... Uh, intangible. This includes the soul, the spirit, the intellect, the will, the emotions, the conscience, and so forth. Now, look at this. These immaterial characteristics exist beyond the physical. Okay? Beyond the physical lifespan of the human body and are therefore eternal. In other words, our soul and our spirit, spirit are eternal. This is the mystery that we have in our own bodies that we don't even understand ourselves. How can you understand the person that you're living with or you're married to when you don't even know yourself? <laughs> but today you're going to know yourself. Amen. Okay? The spirit soul, okay, the heart, the conscious mind and emotions make up the whole personality. Let us make man in our, in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over all the earth. Now, what Yahweh, we don't look, Yahweh doesn't look like us. But what he has given us is characteristics. He's given his characteristics to be in this world. 
The scriptures make it clear that the soul and spirit are the primary immaterial aspects of humanity. Okay? Which the body is the physical container that holds them in this earth. In other words, in order for us to stay here, the body is the one that, that covers our spirit and our soul. You look kind of confused. I'm talking to one of the sisters. Now, now. We need to be very careful what we say, what we do, how we walk. Okay? We need to be very, and we need to learn how to repent and forgive. These are very important things. Repent and forgive. I really don't think None of us have gone through what Yeshua went on, 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 the, on the None of us. And the only thing he says, forgive and follow for they don't know what they're doing. And you cannot forgive somebody for what? I think the most horrendous thing that can happen to anyone is somebody killing another person or raping a child. That is very bad. But we got evils amongst us. And it's not the person, it's what that person carries. Okay? Now, Listen very carefully. Look look at what happened to Adam and Eve. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 3. Okay? And we're going to start on verse 17. Now, many are saying that, that the woman was the one that sinned. Well, the woman did not sin because the woman, she was, um, she was lied to. She was uh, beguiled. She was beguiled. See, but Adam, or the man, is the one that did it voluntarily. This is also a metaphor of Yeshua, you know, that he went to the cross for his bride and so on. Okay, now, <laughs> let's see what happened here. We're going to see, okay? Now, look at verse 17, and now, uh, 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 chapter 3, verse 17. And unto Adam he said, because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, and has eaten, see, like, eaten, eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which I commanded, saying, Thou shalt not eat, it, eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall you eat in all the days of thy life. Thorns and also thistles shall you bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. See, we're supposed to be you know, eating a lot of herbs and vegetables and a lot of, you know, grains and all that stuff. And, and you know what have we done? We want to eat any animal that walks because we think our digestive system does it's really good. So we are the only species in the world that whatever we see moving, and I'm speaking of animals, we're going to eat it. That's why our digestive system is so messed up. Burger King, we want it our way. <laughs> Burger King, <laughs> Bur yes. Look at verse number 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. And unto Adam uh, also he... Uh, to us also and to his wife the Yahweh also make here we go here's the skin that Yahweh put okay and Yahweh Elohim made coats more than one coats of skins for both of them and clothe them okay so he put in them clothes of skin now this is also a metaphor, and it's a prophetic, that Yeshua was going to die, he was going to kill, he was going to die and give his body for us, and the, and the blood was going to be uh, um, shed for us. But really, also is that Adam and Eve were giving flesh. So sin, not only, look at this, sin, now we got to walk with this flesh that is sinful, all, everywhere we go. Because what you saw, you, you reap. Now, 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 look at this. When you're in the flesh, you cannot be in his presence. When you go into the holy of holies, okay, metaphorically speaking, you cannot go in your flesh. Because every time he sees flesh, what he sees, what happened in the Garden of Eden. And the reason that he loves us so much, he knows that we are only flesh. Oh, that we wow. can, that we, that we, he knows we're going to die. Wow. So he has given us a plan of salvation, 
of repentance so we can live eternally. Again, just like he created Adam and Eve. No wonder he ate the flesh. The flesh is your enemy. The flesh is what you and I are fighting continuously. Why is he ate our, our flesh? Excuse me? That's he ate our flesh? Yes. yes. Because that's what he put Because what? Okay. When you, okay. When you live in the flesh, you surrender to any desires that you want. And what that brings is death. The flesh brings death, which means you're not going to have eternal life. <laughs> the enemy knew this. The enemy, what he did, since he fell out of out of grace, so to speak, no. what happened there is angels don't have, cannot repent. Wow. Because angels leave, live eternally. Okay? So what happened is, Hasatan said, since I cannot live, I, I will not have life and eternal life, because I will have eternal death in the lake of fire. I am going to come against them and I am going to bring many with me. And what does Hasatan use? Hasatan uses two things. He uses the mind and he uses the flesh. Yeah, very true. Do you want to see what this is all about? Just take all those commercial and, 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 and all those billboards that they use beautiful women with, with, a, with a curvy, like a, like a pear shape, so to speak, like an Everglass. <laughs> Guaranteed. And all men go, oh, 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 oh. But take all those women, gorgeous women, and just have them naked. You know what I said? There's nothing. You'll see them, a man will see you, you see it, but there's no more, there's nothing to be desired. Because there's nothing hidden. And then you, you say, okay, so what's the what's the deal? What's the deal, Camille? Take the makeup off. Take the makeup off. Yeah. Do you understand that? <laughs> the and if you notice, it's it's okay, you, you, ah, I'm not gonna go into that. Let's just stop right here. <laughs> Listen very carefully. Adam and Eve did not have a flesh because they did not have physical parents. Okay? Because they were created and they were born and made from above. This is what's going to happen to us when Yeshua comes the second time. He says, those that remain until the end, those are the ones that are going to be born again. He told me Nicodemus. Our bodies has not changed yet. What really he is help, what he is giving knowledge is in our spirit man, in our soul man, and in our intellect. It means our minds. And what happens is you begin to walk with him, you begin to seek him, you begin to understand what you're doing. But you always going to have somebody that's going to come in a racer and is going to want to rain on your parade. Am I right? Yes. <sighs> Listen very carefully. Okay, let me see how I did it because let me tell you, I even have problems. Every time there's something very profound, the enemy comes and starts messing with our computer. It is unbelievable. Okay. Now, I, I, want, you to, I want you to understand that you're in the process, if you want to, of growing. We don't stop growing. We right now, uh, there's millions and millions of cells that are being produced, new cells that are being produced every second. Okay? But the growing and being balanced where you have to be is not just in your body, it's in your spirit man and it's in your soul man. Now, I'm going to take this. Okay? This is you. Okay, this is this is you. This is you. And when I mean you, I mean you and I, okay? But I'm just going to put you, okay? Now. Now. <laughs> okay. We have a spirit, okay? Okay. This is this is our body. Which means this is outside. Our body is what we see. Okay? Then we have a mind. Okay? And then also we have what is called 
a soul. The soul and the mind, this is, this is, um, this is here, okay, here is what is called the soul and the spirit. Okay? Now, our hearts, okay, our hearts, okay, and our spirit, these are, these, they both work together. You don't see your soul. You don't see your spirit. You don't know what even it looks like. And the, okay. The battle that you're going through is nothing outside. It's inside of you. Because you have not learned about yourself. Say that again. Okay. The battle. The battle that you're going through is not what you see outside. It's inside of you. Because you have not yet learned exactly who is who are you in your soul and who are you in the spirit. So really, your body, most bodies, are out of balance. They're out of balance. And how you are out of balance in, in the body is the food that you're eating, the wrong food. When you eat a, a balanced meal or a balanced diet, you will be balanced. When you, when you, okay, you want your soul to grow, you want your spirit to grow, you need to know what are you feeding it. If you feed junk, water down gospel, if you feed junk, if you, pornography, disgusting, you know, you're going to be out of balance. Because pornography starts in the mind and the eyes. And guess where it's going to lead? To your body. Okay? Physical food and spiritual food. Spiritual food and, 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 uh, spiritual food and, and natural food and physical food. Oh. I am feeding you today. I am, be, I am beyond spiritual food. This is manna from heaven. It's called angel food. <laughs> manna from heaven. And I am not speaking to your body. I am speaking to your spirit man. And I am speaking to your soul man. Okay. I am speaking to the person that's inside of you. Because right now I don't care about the body. Because the body, the only thing it wants, it, it just wants to please itself. And, the, and, and we are struggling with our flesh and our spirit. That's why there's no balance. <laughs> Let's take food for instance. We need a balanced diet for our body to be healthy. What happens to your body when you eat a lot of sugar, salt, and junk food? What happens? Diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, uh, no balance, you get hypertension, you cannot sleep, a bunch of sickness and disease, hepatitis, cancer, nerve problems, nerve problems, nerves in our body, nerves in our body, okay, now, these must be balanced, these three. In state of equilibrium, you need to eat the right food so you can have the right lifestyle. Not just in your body, the three of them. There were two trees, the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And look at this, the tree of knowledge. What tree of knowledge? What, what am I talking about? There's no such thing as a tree of knowledge. It's a metaphor with Satan himself. The little tree. <laughs> he says, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over all the earth. Okay? And I want them to prosper. Many of you are asking for prosperity. And I'm talking about in your, in your body, in your finances, in your happiness, in your marriages, in your relationship. Okay? But see, the word prosperity means two things. It means happy and growing. If you're not growing in something that you are in, that means you are in lack. You're not prospering in that area because there's something lacking in you. 
And when you think of prosperity, the first thing most people think about is money. No. The word prosperity means to grow, to produce, to grow. Right there. Remember? I told you. To prosper. Look at this. I told you this. Are you growing? Wow. See, you never thought that this message was going to be like this, did you? No. Hmm? I did. No. See, if he put you in this ministry, it's because he knew that you were you were going to be able to relate to us and us to you. He is not going to send you to somewhere where you cannot relate. And always on those on these types of ministry, okay, they're very anointed. There's always going to be a Judas. There's always going to be a Satan. There's always going to be the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden. Okay? And what he's opening to you, and what he's giving it to all of you, he's opening your pineal gland. Your, your pineal gland. He's giving you the light of knowledge. See? Knowledge is power. And I can teach you knowledge, but I cannot make you learn. And see, just as I am giving to you, and I am teaching you this, you need to do the same. What am I talking about? Don't take for granted what is here. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's not even one of you that leave has seven, not even said at least five dollars to this ministry. Selfish. You are selfish. Wow. And let me tell you, you can get, right now, you can give a million dollars to this. Do you really think that what you give is more than what Yahweh is going to give you? Hmm? Yeah. Don't take for granted what he has given you. Because when you give, let me tell you what happened. That is not giving. It's called that you, you are receiving because what he is going to give you is more than what you're giving. And see, I, I don't talk about these things. But if you're here, it's because he wants you to be here. Because you know better than me that I don't sugar top things. I say it like it is. I don't teach, I do not teach what is called the icing on a cake. I teach you each ingredient. And I go in, I go in detail. No limitations. No limitations, thank you, sister. But what do you do with this? Are you are you walking in him? Are you obeying him? Are you are you doing his work? Do you just sit down and you want to hear it and then it's okay? Whatever. And maybe you and you're supposed to send it out. But how much are you how much are you supporting this ministry? Hmm. Not even a thank you I got for none of you. Most of you, I'm sorry, some of you did. Not even a thank you. No wonder you're stuck where you're at. Because in order for you to, uh, to receive a blessing, you've got to be a blessing to somebody. See, he's blessing us because we, I am being a blessing to you. And I don't do this to receive. No, no, I do this because I feel it. It has a passion. Because let me tell you how much you hate what you're going through. I hate even Satan even more for the things I've gone through. And what he's doing to you and to others. Especially my own family. And Israel. And maybe some of you, he has put in your heart to, to help. But what have you done? Like nothing. Selfish. Selfish. We need to stop thinking about ourselves and start thinking about others. If we want our lives to change. We cannot be like leeches. Give me, 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 give me. It's not what you say that matters. It's what you're doing. What are your works? When you say to when you ask somebody, do you love me? What a word. Do you love me? Of course I love you. I told you many times. I love you. It's not what you say. It's what you do that comes. Wow. I didn't expect to say that. So uh, it's not that I'm sorry because I'm not. I'm very happy that I said that. And receive it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Now, listen very carefully. How much do you really love yourself right now? Okay, how much? 
Okay, how much do you love yourself right now? What he has given us, when he says, let us make man in our image and our likeness and let them have dominion over all the earth, let me tell you this. Our, your, our souls is the intellect. It's the feelings. It's the emotions. It's the one Yeshua bought for a price. Yeshua did not, did not pay the price for our bodies. He paid the price for our souls. Mm. Because our souls were the ones that were lost. Somewhere in, somewhere in the ghetto. Somewhere, somewhere over the rainbow. Somewhere in, in far, far land. So really what Yeshua bought was, was the price for our souls. So we can have eternal life. And there's no way. I don't care what we have. There's no, there's no way of how to pay that. Oh, there's no price. There's no price. That is a very, very high value price. Wow. You cannot put a price on that. Okay? Now, the soul is where Yahweh gave us character. His character. Okay? The earth that is cursed is our body. Okay? The earth is a suit. It's the flesh that hides the spirit and the soul. And the spirit is heavenly. Our spirit man is the one that communicates to him. You're very quiet. So the soul, he gave us his character. The gifts. He gave gifts to different people. The body, it comes from the earth that is cursed. And the, and, the, and the spirit, which comes from heaven, is the one, it's, it's the one that need, it's the one that gets fed manna. It's the one that communicates with Yahweh. And when you're not in the spirit, you cannot communicate with Yahweh. You communicate with God, but it's not the God of Abraham, Jesus, and Jacob. There's many gods. And he likes to be called by his name, just like you. You like to be called by your name. So he likes to be called by his name. You're all very quiet. What we eat will affect our, 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 our spirit, our soul, and our body. That's so true. Wow. What we think is who we are. In other words, we are not just what we eat. We are what we think. If you say that it's impossible, that's exactly what it is. If you say that it's real, that's what it is. If you say this is what I be, that's what's going to happen. You have a power that is inside of you that needs to be unleashed. See, I can talk a lot about wisdom and I can tell you about all this. But if you don't know who the Ruach HaKadosh is, see, if you don't know who the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit is, then, then what is it? The serpent had a conversation with Eve. The serpent was using words, and the serpent was going inside Eve's mind. Wow. Okay? Look at what happened here between Hasatan and the woman, the serpent and the woman. Because he wanted to destroy mankind. When we speak, it doesn't matter what we speak. What we speaking is energy. When we, are, I'm speaking right now, and I really is beyond energy. It's beyond talking. This is called singing. This is why you we call it dialect. Different dialects. People have different sounds. Are you with? Are you, are you okay, brother? Listen very, listen very simple. The serpent was making a sound through speaking. And literally, what that sound was a sound like what a crow, cobra does. Hypnotizing her. They're both frequency. And what happened here was... There was a conversation between the serpent and, and a being that Yahweh created perfect. 
But see, Satan was no longer perfect. So now he wanted to make the perfect man and woman imperfect, just like him. Um, he had the power to uh, create, too? Does, does, does Satan has the power to create? No, he cannot create anything. Everything is, that what he does is a copy. Yeah, he, he is, he is. He created by garbage. He, he doesn't create. He just makes. He makes chaos. He makes chaos. Sasa Tong cannot create because the only there's only one creator. Amen. As a matter of fact, any any inventor cannot create new things. What he does is what Yahweh has created. He invents new things. On how to do it? He modifies. It. He modifies it. Yeah. Okay, just like the wheel. You cannot invent the wheel. The wheel's already been done. But what you can do, <laughs> you can put different realms, uh, realms, realms, how do you call it? Rims. Rims, and, and maybe you can put in different colors. A wall. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 what? Painted white. Painted white. But in reality, there's only one creator. Amen. Now, we can create during the day what we want. Then he has the power to mess the, the perfection of of, of uh, Yeshua. Yeah. He has the power to do that. She's asking me how Satan yeah. has the power to, okay. to mess up the creation of, of Yahweh. Yes, yes he does, but, but let me tell you. you open the door, it all depends if you open the door. <laughs> and the door is not only in your mouth, your ears. The door is many places. Wow. This is why sex is so crazy to me. Yeah, true. I am not kidding. Now look at this. Look at what happened in this conversation. There's, there's six things that happened here. There was a conversation between the tree <laughs> of knowledge of good and evil and a person. And that person didn't have a flesh. Number two, there was life being uh, done because here um, uh, he was saying uh, that really God said that you should not eat from all the trees. Now he's using what is called reverse psychology. <laughs> Okay? And Yahweh said, you can eat from all the trees of the garden, but the tree of the garden in the midst of the garden, you should not eat it now. The tree in the midst was not a tree. The tree in the middle was something very beautiful. It's a metaphor. Okay? That tree, you don't eat. That tree, just like a Christmas tree, what happens is it draws your attention because it's got lights. They had a light. It was beautiful. Whatever. It was a creature, but it was beautiful. And by the way, when, when it says serpent, we are constantly, automatically think in our own understanding snake. that it was a snake in the grass. No, it was not a snake in the grass. It was a, actually, it was a seraphim. It was a, it was, it was a serpentine. It was a seraphim. I'm, not, I'm telling you too many things. Maybe sometimes draw a picture of one like you. Okay, it was a seraphim. That's why it's, that's why they say serpent, serpentine. Not literally that it was a serpent. Have you noticed the lizards? They look like one of those those the gigantic dinosaurs. Dinosaurs and all that. Haven't you? Even 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 crocodiles. There's got to be a reason for that. But let's 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 just leave it at that. Okay, let's just leave it at that. Now another thing that it happened. The woman not only said we cannot eat it, but she says we cannot even touch it. Now, when did Yahweh say this? <laughs> and really, what she was saying, even though she was lying, see, this is the thing that they have added and they have taken away from the Bible. Because this is our thing. If somebody's name is called Samantha, I'm automatically going to say, Sammy, Sammy, because we want to take away. We want to use our own names. We want, because that's what humans do. We want to think that we're God. Okay? And what is, what is number four? But he called us Elohim. Number, number four, there were more lies. What is the yellow line? No. The serpent said, you're not going to die. After Yahweh says, if you eat from that, you're going to die. Now he's what contradicting the word, correct? Amen. <laughs> number five, what the serpent was doing through the, through the singing and the voice and, 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 the, and the energy that he was bringing, he was, he was hypnotizing her. And she was saying, oh, this feels so nice. You're my man. Yes. <laughs> and number six, my man. they were having tea time, wow. communication time, and they began to have sex. That's, you know, that's my stuff. And that's my stuff. Because the evil spirits, yes. they, 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 they talk to your mind. Yes. So when you do yoga, let the mind be free. Yes. 
So if yes. Yusuf's knocking in your door. Yes. Wow. No. Far, far, far Eastern uh, philosophy, yeah. where they practice, uh, you know, they practice worshiping all kinds of gods. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. That's what what Hasatan came con to contaminate, so mankind can die, was not a body because they didn't have a body. They did, but I don't know what kind of body it was. Oof. He came to contaminate the soul. Wow. Okay? The human soul is the part of a person that is not physical. It is the part of every being that lasts eternally after the body experiences death. And we can go here so we can see what it's all about. This describes the death of Rachel, Jacob's, the wife that he really loved. Jacob's wife saying she named her son as her soul departed from, him, from her. Okay, go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 35, verse number um, 18. 35, verse 18. Amen. Now, are you receiving all this? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay? New Revelation. 35, 18. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni. This is when she had the uh, Benjamin, the, the smallest of the 12 tribes. For his father called him Benjamin. So see, the soul departs from a body that's dying. And this is what you and I have to protect. This is have to be in balance. Right now, I am speaking to your soul and to your spirit. I am not speaking to a body. Because if you want to, if, for the body to receive things, you have to go to the world. Yeshua said to his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, the spirit wants to, but the body does not want to go in prayer. Yeah. And this is the struggle that we have in our own body. And we blame Satan. No, it's ourselves. And the more you humble yourself in his presence, the more he will lift you up. And the more he will give you more of his character, the more of his wisdom, the more of his knowledge, the more of his power, the more of his anointing. Because in order for us to overcome things that are in the world, we cannot do it in the body. We must do it in the anointing and the power of the Most High. Amen. Just like David when he confronted, when he confronted uh, um, the giant, Goliath. Goliath came with all the armor, like a soldier. <laughs> and, and what did David have? Five stones. <laughs> And he came in the name, in the name, in the name, because that name is inside of you. And right now, you're eating that name, you're eating that power, you're eating that anointing. And it's to build you up, and it's to inspire you, and it's to put words in your mouth. Yahweh Sabaoth did not create heaven and earth by talking. He created heaven and earth by singing. I am singing right now. I am singing different tunes. This is why Hasatan uses music. Uses music for what? To hypnotize people. To hypnotize people. Most of the music you hear today, I mean the, 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 the music is awesome. The tune. But listen to the listen to the lyrics. It's another thing. <coughs> it's another thing. There is a song in Spanish. Te voy a, de, te voy a devorar otra vez. I am going to devour you again. What is that? I, even in my even in my in my sleep, I had thought about you, and I'm I'm not kidding. And this is a song in Spanish, and I even wet my bed. And it, and I'm telling you, I used to I used to hear this song, and I oh she, he, that's that's so romantic, really. That's disgusting. But if you really listen to the, the lyrics in music in the world music today, it is it is nasty. Number five. Let me tell you. 
Hatatan is going to and from seeking who he may devour. Yeah. And he's doing, let me tell you, he's doing a really marvelous job. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, he sure is. And, and <laughs> honestly and truly, uh, we have to keep our eyes open more than ever in our lives. We have to stay in tune with Yahweh Sabaoth. Um, because things are going to get better because Yeshua is coming, but things are not going to get better. Oh my. And there will come a time that people are going to be desperate for this word and they're not going to find it. So don't take this for granted. Let it sink in really, really deep in your heart. You know why? Because faith comes from hearing and hearing his word. Okay? Now, people are referred to as souls. Did you know this? He doesn't refer to people as people. He refers to them as souls. Uh, Exodus chapter 31, verse 14. Are you okay, Brother Simpson? Exodus chapter 31, verse 14. Now, this is, this, is, this is when Israel came out of Egypt. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is a holy unto you. Everyone, uh, Exodus 31, 14. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is a holy unto you. Everyone that defiles it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth many work therein, that soul, not that person, that soul, shall be put off from amongst his people. In other words, that person is not going to have eternal life. Can you, repeat, can you read that again? I want, I want you to read that again. And a little bit louder. So you shall louder, keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is a kadosh holy unto you. Everyone that defiles it shall surely be put to death. Wow. For whosoever do any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from amongst its people. Putting that person or that soul to that means eternal death. That's what that means. <laughs> what is eternal death? Eternal death means that you are going to be in complete darkness. You are not going to have the light of Yahweh. You are going to be in a, in a very cold place where your teeth are going to grind because you will see the ones that have eternal life. Just like the rich man and Lazarus, when one went to hell and the other one, Lazarus, uh, the angels took Lazarus. And the man that went to hell, he saw Lazarus and he saw him and says, please give me a, a little, put the, your fingers and put in my tongue because I'm tormented. And you will be tormented. You know why you'll be tormented? tormented. Not because you're Satan is going to do anything. It's because the you same, no, what? You're going to have the same type of soul, the same type of intelligence when you die. Same type of That's going to be your torment. Uh, that, you had the to that, that you had the chance to ch that you had the chance to be born again. You <laughs> had the chance to do His commandments. You had the chance to do His you, to, to do His feasts. And the way we get tormented is going to give us the same mind. So we had the chance to follow His will. Yes, we had the chance to follow His will. And that's how you that's how a person is going to be tormented. It's going to have the same, the same, the same mind. Just like the rich man. Remember the rich man? Lazarus. He was speaking to Lazarus. So to, let me tell you this. We still have a chance. We still have a chance. And you know what? It's not just being converted and being born. It's really obeying and doing what he says. Because everything we have, he's going to take away from us, even <laughs> our bodies, even our life, even our home. He takes everything away. He, we're just here temporarily. Mm -hmm. this, is, th this world is not eternal. This is going to be done away with. Wow. And he's preparing us now for eternal life. <sighs> he is preparing us for eternal life. And how is that? What is he giving us? He's giving us knowledge. He's giving us his raw hakada. He's giving us information to learn. And what are we doing with it? Well, many of his children today on the Sabbath, they're in, they're in the beauty shop. It's called Charmin. <laughs> they're in a beauty shop. They're in they're in the mall. They're watching TV. I believe 
We have seven days out of the week that we dedicate one day for him. Do you really think that's a lot? It's like being married and once a week I'm just going to dedicate my time to my husband. Once a week. Because you know what? I feel sorry for him. You know, you know why they can't? Why? Because number one, Yeshua, he, uh, every Shabbat, he will cast out demon spirits. Yes. And those demon spirits, they know that on Shabbat, you don't want to go there because you're going to get cast out. Mm -hmm. So they are going to allow it for you to come to Shabbat. I mean, you're absolutely That's right. That's the reason why. You're absolutely right. And it's a struggle. Yes. A constant struggle. It is a struggle. You know it's a struggle? Because we are the ones that are struggling with it. Mm -hmm. It's our spirit man yeah, yeah. And, our, and our flesh man. Mm -hmm. It's our old man, our old self with our new self. Now, whoever, is, whoever captures the soul is wise. Amen. Not a person, the soul. Proverbs 11.30, go there please. Proverbs and Yahweh says, and it says this on Proverbs 11.30. The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. And whosoever captures souls is wise. Amen. Wow. Yeshua. This is the whole concept of, of whole being. What does that mean, capture souls? What I'm doing right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I am speaking to souls. I am capturing souls. What it really the attention that you the curiosity is not your flesh, it's your soul. The man going fishing. And this is why some of you constantly keep on coming. There's something. There, there, there's, there's a connection. There's a divine connection. Fishing that you don't get this is this is this is a rare a rare commodity. Just like just like pure gold. There is, but it's very rare. And that's why you keep on coming. And that's why you keep on seeking it. And that's why you want to hear it. And that's why you want wisdom. You want understanding. Because he is working in your life. He is, he is, he is building you up. You are evolving. And that person that, that oh, whatever that circumstances, you need to get rid of it. What are you waiting for? That person, oh, that circumstances is, the reason it has not left is because you don't want it to leave. And it's not good for you. What are you waiting for? What's stopping you? Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoice. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul. This is when Yeshua will go into hell. You will not abandon my soul in hell. Or let your Holy One see corruption. And this you can go whenever you want. Psalm 16, verse 9 through 10. And Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. It says this. Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Are you receiving this? Yes. Is this edifying you? Yes. Is this making you understand a little bit more? Yes. His truth? Yes. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse number 4. Behold. Oh, we need to go here. Let's go here. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. Did you know that all souls are his? Ezekiel wow. chapter 18, verse number 4. It says, Behold, all souls are mine. Yes. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sinned shall die eternally. More clear than anything I have. In the time of Pentecost, there were 3,000, not people, it says there were 3,000 souls that were converted. It says, so, so those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. So see, today you're learning that your body is not who you are. The real you is your soul. It's your spirit. And your soul does not speak to him. Your spirit, our spirit talks to him. Okay? And you can find this in Acts 2.21. Okay. I am just going to give you scriptures. And you can do your own. 
The human soul is different from the heart. Deuteronomy 26, 16 and Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. And also it's different from the spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. And the mind. Matthew no. Matthew 24, 37, okay, which it says, uh, and Yeshua replied, Love Yahweh with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Can you repeat those verses again? The verses again are these. The human soul is distinctive from the heart. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 16. And the reason for that being is because he circumcised our hearts. It's different from the spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 and Hebrews 4.12. The humans, okay, in the mind, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Love Yahweh with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your, uh, with all your heart. Okay? <laughs> the he, okay. The soul, did you know, and we're going to go here with this one. The soul is created by Yahweh. Of course. Yes. That's how he created it. He told Jeremiah, before I form you in the belly, I knew you and I and I sanctify and I form you in the belly of your mother. This will find, I'm sorry, in Jeremiah chapter 38, verse 16. Let's go there. The souls have to be his. Yes. Of course. Okay. And the be, souls are his. Because when, when you are born uh -huh. and you come into this world. Yes. He, he, he gives you the breath of life. Yes. That's why the souls are here. It says. And we are completely nuts. Okay. We and are nuts completely. We are nuts completely. And you heard them? You heard them? Because, it? you know what? He can take your soul whenever he wants. Yes. Because it's the breath of life. Okay. That's why he gives us a chance to be in this life for as many years as you want. But you have a limit. Until he says, you know what? I had enough of you. Come on. Come on up. You're absolutely right. I'm glad you brought this up, brother, because let me tell you. When that soul, like we were, when we were lost, we begin to call upon him, and that's when he comes. Unbelievable. And those are the ones that are lost. That she will say, I came for only for the lost, sheep. the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Wow. And when that lost soul begins to claim him and begins to say, I'm sorry, please help me, get me out of this. He comes and he rescues that person. And he gives them salvation. This is very powerful stuff. It sure is. Okay? What Sounds happens to the people that are chronic and they keep doing it even though they know it's not good? And does he forgive them every time? She's asking what happens if those keep on doing the same thing, you know, and they don't, they don't repent and they just keep on doing it. What happens? Uh, the Bible says it. They will die. Even if they repent after every sin that they commit. Okay. Once you really... Okay. I'm glad you brought this up. Oh, okay. <laughs> it has been told to us that we sin and we ask for forgiveness we sin and ask for forgiveness we sin and ask for forgiveness well that is not biblical literally when we sin and we we ask for uh, we repent I'm telling you right now it's one time. You stop saying. Because that kind of repeated that I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and I repent, mm -hmm. only comes from your mouth. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come from your heart. Once you repent from your heart, really repenting, you stop sinning. And the word sinning means you stop breaking his commandments, which you don't steal, don't do this, don't lie, other things. Mm -hmm. So really, there's th there's two types of there's two types of repentance. Mm -hmm. There's the word, there's the mouth. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How many liars have said to you, I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah. How many? Uh, I'm sorry. And really, they keep how many? How many men and women, husband and wives, in a relationship, they say they had some kind of craziness or whatever, or maybe the husband committed, you know, adultery, or, or maybe the wife did, and they come back to each other and says, "I'm sorry, I won't do it again." That's just coming from the. A lot of times, it's just coming from the from the mouth out, and they go back to doing it again. But when you come, when it comes from your heart. That is real repentance. And the, and the heart that doesn't repent is a heart that is, is proud, is callous, is hard, is like a rock. And what he will do with that soul, not with, a, with that soul, he will make that heart 
even he will give him more to be more prideful, like he did with Pharaoh. This is serious business. And see, when a, a soul is lost here, that he has sent, because he sent us here, in this generation, whatever generation it is, just like Adam and Eve, just like, you know, Einstein, just like Yeshua, just like whatever generation it is. It, because that is when you are supposed to be born in a family that he has chosen. Well, what happens if somebody gets raped? You're born in the family. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. We are stewards in this world. We are stewards and he gives us a certain community of people so we can, so we can guide them into this truth. Amen. You're going to have people that are going to spit on your face. You're going to have people that don't want you don't, don't talk about this because in the mix there is the, there are the, the, the wheat, the wheat and the tares. You said it. What, what, Jeremiah, what did I say Jeremiah what? Um, 38, Jeremiah? 4, 38, 4. Okay, no, 38, 38, 16. Jeremiah 38, 16. Thank you, sister. So, uh, so, um, but King Zedekiah swore his oath secretly to Jeremiah, as surely as Yahweh lives, who has made us this soul. He has made us this soul. I will never kill you nor hang you over to those who want to kill you. In other words, the reason we're so complex, and he, Yahweh, has made everything so, and he made everything so easy, so, you know, so, he didn't make it complicated. We are the one that complicate things because Yahweh is the spirit. He is, doesn't look like us. We always got to put in if. When we read the word and we say if, we got to get rid of the if. We got to be like children. Let's just be like children. Children, you know, you tell them don't do this, they don't do it. And why do we have to put an if? Well, if, if only, if, if. Get rid of the if in your life. What if? This is why we don't advance because we are analyzing so much the word and the word and the, what if, what if, what if. You know what? Let's just keep our mouth shut. And let's obey what the Ruch HaKadash is saying to us in these last days. There's no time to waste. Amen. And we waste too much precious time on garbage. Yeah. Hasatan, he's the one with the if. Hasatan is the one with the if. You're right, you're right. If there'll be the sun. If. If, you're right. Now, look at this. What needs atonement or forgiveness of sin is not our bodies, it's our souls. And we need to go there. Leviticus chapter 11, chapter 17, verse 11. What needs the atonement that Yeshua died for is our souls, it's not our bodies. Le uh, Leviticus chapter 17, verse number 11. Uh, Sister uh, uh, Olga, can you read that please? 17. Leviticus 17, 11. Amen. Look at what it says. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Wow. Yeshua died for the souls. Wow. Yeshua did not die for our body. Wow. The body is corrupt. And the only thing the body wants is, 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 the, is, is darkness. Is, is, uh, is to... Is to is the body what is the flesh and seek is for pleasure pleasure of drugs pleasure of food pleasure of sex pleasure of killing pleasure of abusing pleasure of hitting pleasure of pleasure of, of fighting that's, 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 that's it's full of decay it's full of decay that's, that's powerful because remember that the flesh comes from the dirt yes and, and the rest of all the stuff that you just mentioned that comes from there yes all that stuff yes comes from there yes that's why it's after that. Yes. And also, Yahweh cursed the dirt. Yeah. So the flesh is cursed. Wow. Okay? Now. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeshua 
is the great shepherd of our souls. First Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-five. First Peter, chapter one. First Peter, one twenty-five. Are you? Do you like this teaching today? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's very powerful stuff. Oh, yeah. You guys are... Oh, we like it. The Aren't devil, you? The devil <laughs> First, Peter, First Peter chapter, uh, First Peter chapter number 2, verse 25. Amen. 25, uh, and it says this. <laughs> For you were, has she gone astray, but now return unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. Ooh. So Yeshua is our shepherd. Yeshua Jesus. is our, Yeshua HaMashiach Ooh. is our, is our oh. shepherd of our souls. Amen. It's the great shepherd of our souls. Amen. Wow. Yeshua is interceding not for our body, but for our souls. Wow. Yeshua intercedes for our souls. For our souls. Now. Would you repeat those uh, places? 1 Peter 1. First Peter, no. First Peter, two twenty-five. Oh, two twenty-five. Okay. Now. You know where I'm very ungrateful. Yeah. One more. What Shabbat is? Is Yahweh's day, His rest day. And this is a day that He makes His souls come, so we can rest of whatever we have done through this week. Okay, which means is Matthew chapter 11, and let's go there. Verse 1129, it tells us that we can turn to Yeshua HaMashiach to find rest, Shabbat, for our souls. 1129. 11, go ahead, Brother Simpson, go ahead. 1129. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you should find rest unto your soul. Which one's that? This is Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. See, Shabbat is to find rest for our souls. Not for our bodies. Not for our spirit man. Because our spirit man is the one that speaks to him. You see? So there's got to be a balance, okay? Now, the soul... Is the, is the balance, is the core center in every function correctly? What do I mean? Balance's core, the balance of core is called love. Love you don't see. Love you feel. You don't see Yahweh because Yahweh is love. Okay? For Yahweh so loved Israel that went into the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not, should not perish but have everlasting life. So when you are in balance in your soul, okay, that your heart is the core of that love. That now you're connected to Yahweh, the one, the creator that created your soul. Yahweh loved Israel. Because love is the center of everything. The greatest energy that exists is love. Because love comes from Yahweh. Yahweh is love and he created everything in his love. He is the equalizer. He is the, he is the one that balances us. The amount of love in which we allow our thoughts to be created and expressed. Is the key that balance our thoughts. Remaining central of love, we enjoy an appropriately strong sense of self-esteem. When we are disbalanced, we sometimes we get depressed, we get oppressed, we don't feel good, but we have insecurities. And, and this is why we it's important to be balanced. This is where it is the, the law of gravity. We enjoy, we see ourselves as we truly are, not more than or less than anyone else. We see others and they are and they are, and we celebrate their presence 
and their contribution to our lives. Balance, like, listen very carefully, in these three items, balance is being in the right order. It's shameful to say that most of us are worrying more and we pay more attention to our body than we do our spirit and our souls. We put more attention in the natural things than we do in the things of the spirit. We put more attention to the, to, the cell, to the cell, to computers, to TV, to electronics, more than we do Yahweh. We put more attention on things that, are, that we're really wasting on what? What are, what are you feeding your body? This is what the enemy doesn't want for you to know the truth about yourself. Amen. The truth about Yahweh. Balance will be the armor you wear so you can travel fiercely through any experience life brings to you. The life force of the universe operates via with two equal opposite forces which manifest in some form of every level in our lives Experience, that is, we experience the manifestation of two equal and opposite forces. Mentality, material, spiritual, and physically. We see these forces operating in the entire material world. You got North Pole and you got uh, the, the South Pole. Did you know that they both have a magnet and they put pulling opposite of each other? Then you have female and male, opposite, pulling against each other. And the only time we connect us, it's a magnet that draws us, is what? It's when we have intimacy. And that's a teaching that I'm going to bring very soon. To some extent, we could say that these qualities or concepts are opposite. Rather than thinking of them as opposite, however, think of them as giving rise to each other because opposite attracts. Day and night. Up and down. East and west. In and out. In and out. Positive, negative. Wow. Happy, sad. <laughs> Happy, sad. Yeah. Okay? Your real self is a perfect balance of physical and spiritual qualities. And true freedom is the freedom to express both. You have male and female. You have created, which means you give. And you have receptive, you receive. Man creates. Man is, is, gives. When there's intimacy between a man and a woman, the man gives. That's all he does. He's giving. And what the receptive is the female. She receives. That's all that happens there. That's, not, that's it. Mm -hmm. A woman does not give him. A woman receives. Mm -hmm. Because opposite attracts. Mm -hmm. Then you got aggressive and passive. You got strong and weak. You have heaven and earth. You have white and black. You have hot and cold. You have light that radiates. And you have dark that absorbs. Mm -hmm. You have day and night. You have hoping and you have hidden. You have increase, you have decrease. You have fullness, you have emptiness. Does this make sense to you? Mm -hmm. On what it is to be balanced? Yes. yes. Your real self is part of balance of a physical, spiritual qualities. And true freedom is the freedom to express the quality of both. Yahweh created the mind, the material, the spiritual, and the physical. And Elohim divided what? He divided what? Light from darkness. He divided Sunday from Saturday. He divided evening from morning. So, Psalms 8, chapter 8, verse 3 and 5, it says, When I consider the heavens, the work, go ahead. The work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, 
which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him? It's constantly, we are constantly in his mind. And the son of man, that you are constantly visiting him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with, a glo with glory and honor. Okay. Now this is David speaking. David is saying all this. How is it that, that you have, you know, I, I'm seeing the beautiful wonders how you created everything, even the angels and everything. But what what you had the what is me and that you're constantly that you that, that you're con your 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 mind is on him. Because it's his soul. It's his soul. Why are you constantly thinking about man? Why are you visiting the son of man? Soul. You have made him lower than angels, but yet you have given him glory and honor. Amen. And I believe Satan was even saying this to. To Yahweh. Why, why are you doing this? I don't understand that. He's so jealous. Because He's so of, jealous. Because of the souls. You know why? He loves us. Because the souls. when you yes. have passion wow. for something, you don't want nobody to, to mess that up. Wow. And his passion is mankind. His passion is you. It's not the flesh. It's not the flesh. It's your soul. It's the soul. He created your soul inside of the womb of your mom. Wow. Okay? I don't care about Our spirit, soul, and body must be balanced. Otherwise, it goes wacky. It goes mashugana. Mm. Don't allow yourself to walk up with yesterday's issue, issues troubling your mind. Refuse to live backwards. See every day as a new chapter in your life. Balance is freedom. Joy, laughter, excitement is being spiritual. Being spiritual means you trust in Yahweh's divine nature to take care of you and allow his divine forces to deliver justice to those who deserve it. Learn of yourself how to let go of anger. Let go of the hate and hurts. And move on with your life in balance. Are you receiving this? Yes. I like to know with this. I'm not talking about a physical, I'm not talking about to, you know, like a physical crime here. I'm talking about a personal emotional issue. If you believe someone has harmed you physically, then I urge you to contact the authority in your area. When you are not in balance in your body, in your spirit, and in your soul, you're weak and you're sick. And you cannot function correctly. The more sugar you eat, the more you want sugar. The more salt you eat, the more salt you want. The more junk food you eat, the more you want. But start eating healthy. You're, when you're hungry, literally, when you're hungry, your stomach says, I'm hungry. But really what's happening to you at that moment is that your body is losing nourishment and minerals and vitamins. So when we're hungry, we automatically we go to food, any food. But when you feed it the right food, the right minerals, the right vitamins, I'm going to tell you, you're going to be so full and you're going to be so energized. You're going to feel so good that what happens, the fat. In your body. The disease, it will go away. Sure. Because he made, the, he made, he made what? He made the trees and the herbs and, and all that, all those, uh, the fruits for a purpose. And the body has a way of heal, healing itself. But if we put more junk and more junk, guess what's going to happen to our body? There's more junk here. And if your body is not healthy, your soul and your spirit are not going to be healthy. Because the least thing you want to do is, is read the Bible or hear the word because it bothers you. Yeah. And the first thing you're going to say, well, you know what? I, I believe him. I do his Shabbat. I do his commandments. And I'm still with this. What's going on? See, that's the, that's the, that's the problem with us human beings. We constantly are blaming him. Just like Adam. The woman you gave me. Yeah. She's the one that... You the one that focused. You gave me this woman. So I, I, I sinned because it's your fault. You gave it to me. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Whoa, we're evil. Like that. We're evil. Um, Everything in the universe that Yahweh has created, he has created and it works through laws. Don't kid yourself. A law is an order that something must function correctly. Why does Yahweh require us to learn his laws? And I mean not just here and obey his laws. I'm talking about universal laws. Okay? It is only in order for us to know how to make fewer mistakes. How to enjoy ourselves and how to avoid troubles and problems. Now, with this I am going to finish. Let me see where it is because I have a lot of information here. What are you expecting from this from this teaching today? Did you get what you wanted today? Yes. And so? Yes. Arnold Schwarzenegger said, Make my day. <laughs> I'll be back. Well, Hasta I know. <laughs> when he says, make my day, he wasn't kidding. Think about the word, make my day. Okay. If you are not making your day, somebody else will make it for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Somebody will make it for you. So you better start making your day. We connect every day. We connect through touch, people, computer, physical world, spiritual worlds, eyes contact, hearing, phone, internet, cell, taste, food, liquid. Especially, we connect with thoughts. We are what we think, not what we eat. Because before we eat junk food, we think it first. True. Before we put it in our mouth, we think it first. True. So we are not what we we eat. We are what we, we think we are. Okay? The mind is connected to the heart and the body. The mind sends, uh, receives signals, energy, and body outside in the universe, including Yahweh, the creator, and the universe. Look at this. You are not defined by your past, present, or future, but you are defined by your thoughts. Mm. New thoughts bring about new information. And new information should lead to new choices. New choices should lead to new behaviors. New behavior should create new experiences. New experiences should create new emotions. New emotions should drive new thoughts this is called evolution. Knowledge is an acquired taste for learning. Information creates transformation. I am coming out of this situation. Thoughts are the language of the mind. Feelings are the language of the heart. And let's... For, to finish this. What is exactly is what you want. What is exactly do you want? Did you create your day today? Where are you right now? Where are you going? What have you learned about this teaching today? How are your thoughts, habits lately? What is haunting you and seems you cannot let go? The soil is your mind. The seeds are your thoughts. The water is the action. The sun is your feelings of energy. You become what you think about. Your mind is the garden. Begin to plant only things that you want. How are you connected with yourself? How, who are you connected with? And for this, I leave you. No, I leave you right now. The conclusion of the matter. Life <laughs> is the blank canvas of possibilities. You are in control of what the finished picture could look like. Okay? All laws of nature that Yahweh created are completely perfect of His laws. 
And there's no exception. No matter what you are looking to have or achieve to be in your life, if you can hold on to an idea and see it for yourself in the mind's eye, you can make it yours to have with some effort on your part. Be happy, for Yahweh is always on your side. There's no restrictions. Open your mind to the possibility that Yahweh has for you. Shabbat Shalom from First Yahudim Messianic Temple.